Because if you were to ask me where, where do I get my position from and what do I base my position on, this is what I base it on. I base it on the principle that is given in the New Testament and then I use this to then interpret what I see in the Old Testament. So this is where it all begins. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandments, so it's saying this is how sin is revealed, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. That's what we talked about last week. Law, sin being dead and not killing it yet, being born spiritually alive. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For, the, for those of you who weren't here last week, basically what that is saying is, the only reason why uh, we can know what sin is, is because of the law of God. And he's saying here, when he got the knowledge of the law of God, that's when the sin revived and he died spiritually. So this is where I start. I start with the principle, hey, what we see here is Paul's explaining that the moment a person is accountable for their sins is the point at which they have knowledge of the law. So when they have knowledge of the law, by that commandment, by that law, their sin revives and now they die. Right? And that's where I start. Now, the reason why I, I, I first of all, cannot accept that it's 20 years old because we know for a fact, I mean, we know scientifically that people have this knowledge before 20 years old. How do we know that? Because people are saved before they're 20 years old. How can you get saved without the knowledge of the Lord? How can you believe on Jesus Christ and understand those scriptures and yet not understand the scriptures in regards to the law? I don't think somebody can understand, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and yet not understand the law when it's the same book that is explaining both. You know what I mean? Because that means they're understanding one part of the Bible, but they can't understand another part of the Bible. You know, but if they're old enough, they should be able to understand, you know, they're understanding that bit, they can understand the other bit. So we know, we know for a fact that this age where people have this knowledge of the law comes before 20. Not, not only that, people, people under 20 teach the Bible, don't they? I mean, you have church, I mean, we don't have it in our church, where people have, you know, children's church and Sunday school and things like that. And the people that are teaching those classes to those little children are people that are under 20 years old. So that means that people under 20 years old, they can understand the commandments, they can understand the law. So by this principle, that means they are capable of dying spiritually because they understand the law. Their sin has been revived and they die. But, you know, so with that in mind, you know, because I, I don't, I do not think you know, whilst I don't think necessarily, you know, science, so-called, should dictate our positions, obviously anything said in the Bible cannot contradict what we do see with science. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, we might see something have the wrong interpretation and the Bible might conflict with our interpretation of, those, of that science and then we've got the wrong interpretation of the science, we need to rethink those things. But it's, if it's an observable fact that you can see people under 20 understanding the law, getting saved, teaching people the law, teaching people the Bible, I don't think it's easy then to take a position that that happens after 20 years old, right? So then the question then is, well then what is the explanation for Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1 and Numbers 14? So I want to provide you a viable alternative which I think is much more reasonable. So uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy 1. 